Hello, this SOLIDWORKS tutorial will cover adding design details and grip details to your existing bottle. Uh, we will cover how to insert a new plane. Uh, we'll go over linear patterns within a sketch. We'll also cover uh, the extrude and pattern features in more detail. Um, so we're going to work on your existing bottle file if you want to open that up. Um, now, in order to edit an existing file, you want to work within specific areas of your tree. Uh, to keep it organized. To do that, there's a blue bar at the bottom that you can click and drag to wherever you want to work. In this case, we want to drag it to just under our bounding box sketch. We're going to work on adding a plane here. So if you can't see your bounding box sketch, you want to make sure you hit Alt plus V or Option plus V on a Mac, uh, V for view, and that should turn it on. Um, and what we're going to do is create a new top plane sketch. So we'll select the top plane and click on the sketch icon. We are now in Sketch World. The icon is pressed down, and we see these icons here. Um, if you want to look perpendicular to the plane, you can hit Alt plus N. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a circle. Um, the hotkey for that is O. And I'm going to click on the center, or the origin, so that it is coincident there. And I'm just going to drag the circle out and click uh, to create it. Um, now, we want to tie the circle into our bounding box. Um, Basically, the goal is to create a plane that changes its location based on the size of the bottle uh, so that our file is robust and it rebuilds whenever we make changes to the size for volume. Um, so we can go ahead and click this green check here. So we're going to click on the circle. And it's, hot, it's selected in yellow. I'm going to hold down Control, and I'm going to click on this top uh, endpoint here. And I want to set this relationship to be coincident. So now your circle should be black. Um, and what this will do is now when this bounding box changes, the circle will change because it's tied to this endpoint. So that's a very important step. The last thing we want to add to the sketch is a line. So I'm going to hit Alt and N again just to make this perpendicular for me. And I'm going to hit L for line. And I'm, again, I'm going to click on the origin. I want this to uh, come down. And you can see if I it have, it, have it snap to vertical. And we see that little uh, yellow box telling us it's vertical. And I'm going to click on the edge of the circle here. And I hit Escape to get away from the line. And now we can see we have a fully defined line. It's attached to the circle. Um, and the circle is attached to the bounding box. So if we just show what, what I mean by this, um, if we go ahead and change this 2.85 diameter to, let's say, 2, we can now see that the circle also shrinks and this line also shrinks. So now these two sketches are tied together. Um, and that's important for our changes if we want um, our tree to rebuild and, and have our features and our file be robust. So that's our top um, sketch that will change size. We want to now add a plane um, so that we can have cut or extrude features that will always be on the outside of our bottle. So to add a plane, the way you do that is you go to Insert, Reference Geometry and Plane. And this will bring up a dialog here. Um, and it's kind of asking you, hey, how, like what, how do you want to define where the plane is located? So this is my preferred method of creating a plane. It's using sketches. So we're going to use this existing sketch we have. Um, and I'm going to click on this line for the first reference. And then for the second reference, I'm going to click on the endpoint that's touching the circle. And here you can see in yellow, it's, it's suggesting where this plane goes. Um, SOLIDWORKS should automatically give you these um, relationships. It, it kind of just it, it, it intuitively guesses what you want to do. But in case it doesn't, you want the line to be perpendicular and the point to be coincident. Um, you can ignore this third reference. Uh, this is a way to create a plane with only two references, which is a line or an a arc and an endpoint. We can go ahead and click Check. So now, if we change the bounding box, we saw the circle changed. Now the plane will also move with that circle. Um, and that's very important for these next uh, features. So now we want to edit our master sketch to add the details. Um, so right now I have, uh, right now we cannot see my photo reference. I have it hidden. Um, and now sometimes Alt-V will not solve that problem for you. you can, if you look here on the left, um, it's just like a thin black line. It's not blue like the other sketches. The way you change that is you right click on this and you can click on the eyeball and then it can show it. So that's another way to hide and show things. It's like another level of, of visibility switches. Um, so I'm going to click on the master sketch here and edit it. So again, you can just sort of uh, 
click and edit, or I think just select it and hit Alt S or click on this icon, and we should now be editing our master sketch. Again, Alt N to make it perpendicular to view. And now we can see uh, some of these design details in here. Um, I'm just gonna focus on these grip details for now. So I'm gonna hit O to draw a circle. And instead of drawing it off to the side here, I'm gonna center it. Um, it will always work better centered on your bottle uh, as opposed to slightly off center. So I'm just gonna you know, judge by eye a circle that's about the right size. Um, it, I see that there's a four pattern, but I don't need to worry about that now. I will pattern this sketch later when we add it in the feature. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and exit that sketch. So now it's part of our master. And now we can just simply take the blue bar and drag it all the way to the bottom. We've kind of inserted um, you know, sort of our updates at the top here, keeping, keeping all our reference organized at the top. So if someone else needs to work on your file, they can see your references right away. Sometimes trees get really long and you don't wanna hide your features in there. Um, so that's the reasoning for what, what we just did. So now we want to add this um, detail as a grip to our bottle. So we're gonna create a new sketch on this plane we just made. So I'm gonna select the plane. I can either select it in the viewing window or the tree. And then I'm gonna click on sketch. Once again, we're in sketch world. And now again, Alt N, so I look normal to it. And what I can do is I can click on this detail from our master sketch and convert entities. So now it's copied. If I hit Alt V, I can hide all the sketches so we can see this. Um, and now I wanna pattern it to match the sketch reference. So obviously our, our physical uh, SOLIDWORKS body is blocking our view. We can hide it, I believe, by right clicking on the bottle here and just going down to hide. Again, it's the eyeball with the line through it. And now we're gonna learn a new feature. It's a linear sketch pattern. It's very similar to this, to the, um, pattern feature that we use to create the bottle cap or the grips in the bottle cap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the detail we wanna pattern, and then I'm gonna click on linear sketch pattern, and this dialog will come up. So you can see it's, it's already prompting a second circle here because of this number two along the X axis, but of course we want this to go up um, in the Y axis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know what, I don't need to go left and right. I, I'm happy with the one as it is, so I'm gonna change that number to one. And then here in the x-axis, I can count how many I need. One, two, three, four, five. And then add that number in here for the number of instances. And then I can change the spacing here. So defaults to point one. Um, and we can, I can click, you know, change this value. If you really wanna dial it in, you know, you can do that. Um, and of course, if your pattern goes left, right, you would work, you would work in the X axis. Um, it doesn't matter. Or I, I recommend checking this dimension Y spacing box and clicking check because then once it's created, you can always change the spacing later. It kind of builds that in. You can also change the angle if you want. Uh, display instance count also allows you to change the number. So if I click on this later, I believe if I double click on this, I can change this to like four. And so it will, it will update that. So it's, it's, it's quite fluid. Um, but anyway, this is what we need. It matches the visual detail behind us. Um, now, while we're still in this sketch, inside of this sketch world, we want to now add a feature. So everyone's bottle is slightly different. So firstly, I'm gonna show the bottle we hid. Now, in order to do that, I'm gonna go to the solid bodies tab here and expand it and I can see this is the hidden file because it's white. Um, I believe I can right click on this and click on the eyeball. And now we can see our bottle. So everyone, as I started to say, everyone's bottle is different. Uh, you might want to do a positive grip feature like uh, little dimples or um, a negative grip feature. So something cut in like little uh, craters. Um, matching this, the soda bottle, it's going to be craters for me. So I'm going to go to the features tab here and click on extruded cut. Um, if I wanted dimples, I would go with um, a positive extrude command, this one here. Now, for now, the depth doesn't matter too much. We will set it um, using a revolve command later. If you wanted, this won't work for everybody, but you could try an offset from surface here. Um, and it would save you some steps down the road. You can kind of see here how it's setting the offset to be 0.1 but you can see that you can only select one surface 
So it doesn't quite work for this top one. And this is why I'm saying it won't work for everybody. So what I recommend is to have this setting to be blind. We're going from the sketch plane because we went through, through the trouble to create a plane that will move with the bottle. And again, for the blind depth, it doesn't matter. Um, just you know, deep enough that you can have the feature um, you know, be noticeable. And again, we will set the depth later with a separate command. So I'm just going to hit point 0.4. Um, you may want to select just the bottle here if you want. It's kind of a good habit and best practice to get into, especially if you have any features that are near the top. I'm going to click check when I'm done. And now we can see we've, we've uh, cut you know, four or five holes into our bottle. Now the next thing we want to do is pattern this all the way around because um, it's not, you know, the grip detail is, is all the way around the bottle. So to do that, we're going to go and find the linear pattern under our features tab up here. And uh, what we want is a radial pattern, the same way we created the grip on the cap. So I'm going to click on the little triangle below linear pattern and find circular pattern. And now in our property dialog, again, the, anything highlighted is the question. So here it's saying, hey, what features do you want to pattern? Um, I believe you can select the feature directly here. Uh, but again, the best practice, the better way to do it is to expand the tree here. And I can select cut extrude two. Or again, if you have a positive extrude, you would select that one. Now for direction, we always want to select, and when it's a circular pattern, you want to select the center axis, uh, which is a bit confusing with the word direction. I it should probably say axis. Um, so I'm going to click on this center pattern or center line here from our bounding box. And here you can see 22 instances. It patterns it quite a lot. Uh, you can count what it is on your bottle. For me, it's 10. Um, or if you're designing your own bottle, you know, you can kind of pick what's visually appealing. Um, you know, you can skip instances here if you wanted. So you know, if you highlight this box and, and click on one of these dots, it, it will give you a gap in that location. If you want to get rid of that, you can hit delete. I want to check your settings up here. Um, I prefer the setting of equal spacing and a full 360. So it's evenly spaced around your, your bottle. It will do the math for you to, to get them spaced evenly. Um, you can space the instances themselves, you know, so 10 instances at 15 degrees apart. Uh, but this is the setting I prefer. So once you have your settings uh, in your property manager to your liking. You can go ahead and click on the green check mark. Check mark. Um, and now you can see we have this grip all the way around the bottle. Now, as I mentioned, we will now set the depth of this grip. You can see, you know, this is just a blind cut. They're all cut to the same depth. But realistically, if you look at your bottle, it's probably offset from, you know, the surface of where it exists. So the way we're going to do this is with either a positive revolve or a revolve cut. Again, it depends on whether you have um, sort of a cavity or like a bump on your bottle. So for my cavity, I'm going to do a positive revolve. Uh, but this first step is the same either way, regardless of what you're doing. So what we're going to do is create a new front plane sketch. So I'm going to select the front plane and hit Alt S and then Alt N so we look normal to it. Now you want to make sure you can see your master sketch. It's kind of hard to see here, but it's this gray line behind here. Now. Wherever your grip detail is, you want to select uh, the corresponding features that overlap with it. So what I mean is, in these case, in my case, it's these two arcs. And what I mean by overlap is, you can see how the um, grip detail exists sort of within the field of these two arcs. I don't need to select this one down here because there's no grip detail in this area. So, but maybe yours has grip detail down there. So select uh, the you know the features that overlap with where the grip detail is. You can select multiple features by holding down control. When you have them selected, click on convert entities. So now we have this copied from our master sketch. So now we're going to learn another new sketch feature. It's called offset. Um, it works as advertised. Before we do that, though, I'm going to select both my features here, these two arcs, and I'm going to just set them to be for construction so that our feature will ignore uh, these construction lines when when it's off, when we apply the feature. Um, so once they're set for construction, we can select both and then click on offset entities. Now, if you have like a bump on your bottle, you could use this offset to cut the bump so that it follows the shape of the bottle. In my instance, because it is um, a, like a scoop or a crater, I'm going to click on this box here, reverse, so that it sets the depth of these to be an offset of the bottle. 
I'm going to set the depth to be 0.04. It's roughly a millimeter deep. Um, if you want two millimeters, you'd be 0.08 inches. Um, it doesn't really matter, but this is my settings that I prefer. So uh, you could also measure it. So once you have that set where you want it, you can click on that checkbox. So again, for me, um, I am looking to add volume to my bottle here because these holes are currently too deep. Um, and I'm going to select, I'm going to close off this um, surface or this, this, I'm going to select these features and turn it into a shape so that I can turn it into a positive revolve. So I have my line tool here, L for line. I selected the endpoint. I'm going to make a horizontal line that's coincident to the center here. And while my line tool is still working, I'm going to click up here. And then I'm going to close the shape by selecting this final endpoint and then hit escape to end that. Um, now it doesn't matter, but I am going to just select this and hit, you know, give it a command of horizontal. So now I have this closed shape. What I'm going to do is while I'm still in the sketch, I'm going to go to features and click on revolve base and select the center here. And again, the reason we're doing this is now you can see in this kind of uh, highlighted yellow that we're setting the depth of all of these, um, you know, details to be related to the shape of the bottle. So it's not just kind of like a blind um, hole, so to speak. You know, you don't want some holes deeper than the other. Um, it's probably, the design details are probably in reference to the shape of the bottle. Um, now what's important in feature scope is I want to select that it's just blending to the bottle. I don't want to accidentally blend it to the cap as well. Um, so once you have all those set, I'm going to go ahead and click the checkbox. And now you can see we have a detail that looks a lot more realistic than how it did before. And again, this path should work for everybody. If you have a bump, um, you know, a bump out detail, uh, you would use a revolve cut and have that offset go to the outside. And then it would cut it all to the same height um, in reference to the bottle. Now, the last thing we want to do is just add some fillets to our grip details. We can do this quite quickly. So you can select the fillet command. You can do it quite quickly by selecting um, the face uh, where these features exist. Um, that way you don't have to go around and, and click on every single little edge. Um, again, I'm going to make my detail maybe about 0.04 inches big. Now, if you wanted to put a, a fillet on the inside, it would require selecting each of, each of um, you know, these circles here. So for me, I'm just going to put it on the outside. And there you have it. We have our grip detail on our bottle. You want to go ahead and save your file now. And it doesn't hurt to check and make sure that whatever design detail you added can rebuild. So after having just saved your file, uh, you can go to your bounding box here and start playing with these numbers again and just checking that your updates worked. So I'm going to make it a bit more narrow maybe make it a bit shorter and let's see if anything rebuilds or if anything explodes and we can address it. So there you go. Um, you can see like the grip detail dropped down a bit. Um, here is, you can see now that it, it exists, it gets into this feature. So because we didn't copy this, um, we have this weird gap here. So definitely check for, for anomalies like that. Um, the way to fix that is we edit our master sketch and it probably would have been a good idea for me to dimension uh, this feature to make sure that it's always above um, this this endpoint here you know it, may, it might not also hurt to dimension the size of this um, so this is like how you check and learn how to edit your master sketch is you just make changes you see if anything fails and so now that we have those things attached you can see that that issue has gone away and here we can try editing our bounding box again to see, can we make it bigger? So let's see, the, can we make it maybe three inches or let's say 3.2 and maybe make this nine inches tall. And again, because we went through the efforts to set up this sketch in this plane, it moves the plane with the size of the bottle. So that's what allows this to rebuild and not give us errors. So it's these steps that allow you to have robust models that can be changed and tweaked uh, for design proportion or volume as you need.